Hello everyone, I'm Bill Harris and this is Life Questions, a program that provides answers to your questions about life from a biblical perspective. Our program is driven by the questions that you, our viewers, send us. And in preparation for today's program, we have forwarded those questions to a local panel for research. And today they're here with their results and I'd like you to meet them. First off, we have Dr. Joshua Steinke, who is a chiropractor and has a ministry entitled Worship Anyway. Next to him is Ron, uh, Dave again, Rosnowski, who is with Neighborhood Relief Ministries. Following him, we have two fine looking ladies with us, Dale Ann Ross of Remnant uh, Worship, and we have uh, Jody Mears of Remnant Worship. Both of those have the same ministry together. Thank you for being with us on today's program. Thank you. Yeah. Let's do this because there's some uniquenesses about your ministries and really something that touches people. I'd like you to start, let's go around and start with you ladies, talking about each of your ministries before we get into the questions from viewers. What about Remnant Ministries? Uh, Remnant uh, Worship is a mobile mm -hmm. worship ministry. Mm -hmm. um, we're sisters and we take our worship blood into sisters? the, we're both blood. Sis oh, blood yeah. sisters, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. And uh, we take our worship into the streets or into local churches or travel into other churches and um, just basically host the presence of God and, and we feel like our ministry is part of a mission uh, to a particular yeah. territory. Yeah. So, but we, we particularly focus on downtown Lima. Okay, add, add to that if you will. Well, I think she said most of it, but um, you know, it's all about following the cloud, following the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it doesn't seem, uh, <laughs> it doesn't seem like the typical thing, but I just feel like it's the new thing that God wanted to do for us. and. Um, and so we love what we do. We love bringing worship in the church to the people instead of asking them to come to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine because Jesus did both, you know? Yes, yes yeah. he did. Go right ahead, doctor. So worship anyway is something that we started about seven years ago, but uh, a chiropractor by trade. But uh, once I got saved and we started seeing people's lives change in health, uh, the Lord really called us to start really reaching our community. Uh, and, and what we really wanted to do was bring the church together outside of the church mm -hmm. and all the churches together outside of the church. And uh, so we started this thing uh, originally called Lift It Up. And then we, and then the last couple of years, we called it Worship Anyway, because it was really what we did. And, um, and so the whole point of it is to bring people outside of all their denominations to worship the Lord in spirit and truth and, and really to make change in our community. So, Excellent. Yeah. And Dave, your ministry too? It's, uh, yeah, um, so um, Neighborhood Relief Ministries was kind of founded out of a Neighborhood Relief Thrift Store where we um, had seen a lot of need in our community and people were coming to our store uh, to get assistance. And so um, we decided that we weren't meeting all the needs in our community. So we took to the streets uh, with clothing, food, um, and, and a, a mobile assistance trailer. Um, and we feed uh, meals and we go on the streets and bring hope into the streets to people that are, are hurting and, and hopeless. So um, it's just a, it's a street ministry. Excellent. You know, there's so many roles that we can play in the church and, and Christ likens it to a body, the different members of the body that, that perform certain functions. And certainly there's a tremendous need, particularly now in this pan age of the pandemic, and like a tremendous need to go to where the people are, which is yes. what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Do you sense, though, that many in the church are really hesitant mm -hmm. to get out there? Mm -hmm. it, it's, what, what you all have done is remarkable. But you sense that how, how did you overcome any resistance or holding back or whatever to just step over that and get out there and minister to the people? Can you talk to that? How did you, do, how did you overcome that? I don't know that it's completely overcome, overcame, ah. to be honest with you. I feel like it's one of our biggest, um, it doesn't hinder us. We still continue to follow the cloud and we can still continue to preach the gospel, the simple mm -hmm. gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do believe it's one, but I think that's in part of what our mission is, is to be an example yeah. of what the Bible preaches, what the Bible teaches us. Sure, sure. And so as by just being an example and continuing to go out and, and do what Jesus has called us to do, I think it's just, it's being an example. And I believe it inspires through Holy Spirit, other people that tugging that they're already feeling on the inside or, or even if a, a mainstream of a church is feeling like, you know, mm -hmm. we should be outside of mm -hmm. these walls, but we're not really sure how that looks yeah. or what that, yeah. I feel like kind of as we've been called frontliners or forerunners yes. in a sense. Yes. So I feel like that's kind of plowing the way so that others will follow 
follow and mm -hmm. and, and be a part of, of what we're doing. But you must have heard a little voice inside you said, no, don't oh. get out there. Don't 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 do that. Sure. How did you I overcome mean, probably that? more more so me than than Jody, if I can speak for her, because yeah. I served in a church for 20 years when she was not, you know, serving in a church. She didn't want anything to do with church. And that's part of her testimony. We won't go into there. But I served in church. So for me, that was really hard because the question in my mind is, do I have permission? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not necessarily that anybody said that you can't, it's just that it wasn't really encouraged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so, and so it, I would sometimes think, oh, am, am I supposed to be doing this? Because we weren't, we weren't really <clears throat> at the time serving much in the local church. We were serving outside the street. So it's like, it's like that, that question of like, am I, am I doing what God, God said? Um, but when we started seeing the fruit of our labor and the mm -hmm. fruit of obedience mm -hmm. yeah. um, is when I was like, oh, his hand is on this. He is, he is doing <laughs> yeah. this um, and this is him. And, and it's inspiring because I believe it is what she was talking about in the word. It talks about provoking unto good works. Mm -hmm. It's a provoking and a prodding and people see it. And I believe people are gonna see even more fruit in the days to come. And you were gonna see, especially yeah. once the weather breaks, I believe we're gonna yeah. see more of the church in the streets yeah. being the church. Excellent. They encourage somebody. How can they break the barriers uh, when, when, when the church may be saying that, you know, we, we, we can't get out there, we can't get out there? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in some of the things that we're talking about that there's been a spirit of apathy um, and complacency yes. um, that has uh, overcome the church, a, a, a self-centeredness. We, we've, you know, kind of had our eyes on ourselves and, and been oblivious to what the enemy is doing in, in our communities. And so for us, um, you know, what really m moved us, uh, when you read scriptures, you know, Jesus was always saying go, or mm -hmm. he, he mm -hmm. sent them. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a passage of scripture that, that God really spoke to me, um, and it was in Luke 14, uh, where he said that there was a banquet that was being prepared, and he invited all the, uh, you know, the religious people in a sense, all the people that were the Christians that were supposed to come. And they all made excuses of why they couldn't do what they needed to do or to come to this banquet. And so then he, he said to the servants, come on now. Yes. He said, go quickly. Don't waste any time. Go quickly into the streets, into the alleys and invite them into my banquet. Go to the sick, go to the, the hopeless, go to the ones that nobody else wants to go to. Go to the darkest places where nobody else will go. And so that's what has driven us, and I know your ministry, is to go and invite people to come because we're, we've invited all the religious people and they've, they've turned us down. They, 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 they have all have excuses why they can't be there. But what we're seeing is, is that the sick and the hopeless, they're so hungry, yes. they're so desperate, and yes. so we're, we're, we're ministering to those people. A lot of hungry folks out there, I take it, doctor. Yeah, you know, for us, this is, the, this is kind of the wild thing. You know, when the when, when pandemic happened and everybody's shutting down, we used to do one, of, one worship event a year, and we always knew that that wasn't enough, that God was calling us to do more and more and more, and, and uh, we didn't know how that looked. And it would, we didn't never want it to be about us and what our agenda was, but Lord lead us, Holy Spirit lead us. And so the pandemic happens, everything starts shutting down. And we, in, in our spiritual walk, with, we just felt the Lord say, now go. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And <laughs> I'll never forget, we, we, uh, despite all that, we, we found a place that was willing to let us come and worship. And we just said, you know, whether one or a thousand, we're just going to do, we're just going to worship anyway. And that's kind of where that name come from. But I'll never forget coming out when it was time to start the worship night and there was people as far as I could see, yeah. right? And there was cars parked in these country roads as far as I could right. see. And I thought, doesn't everybody know they're not supposed to come out, right? <laughs> like, like, doesn't everybody know? And, and literally we, we were unprepared for how many, uh, how many came out. So that started and then three months later we did another one and more people came and, and, and then in, in the spring more people came and, and now we're, we're like, God, where are you gonna take us so we can fit all these people? And so for us, it's not that we're worried that are people going to come out. It's there are people that are ready to go deeper with the Lord. And many of them weren't the churched people yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so who are we to say, well, I guess we just won't do anything until this breaks. Right. 
And so that's why, you know, when we say worship anyway, it's not a, a cool name or something we put on a hat. It's, it's literally our heart. Okay, well, you're not a, you're not a pastor. You can't do that. Well, I'm going to worship anyway, right? And you're not a, you, don't, you don't have this, you know, uh, qualification. Well, I'm going to worship anyway. You're not supposed to be, you know, doing this right now. You can't meet. You can't have more than 500 people in the building. You can't have, uh, we're just going to worship anyway. And not that we don't care about people, you know, health and things like that. We certainly do. But there is one that we look to that's above all that other yeah. stuff, Amen. you know. And yeah. so, very good, yeah. very good. And it takes takes a lot of boldness to do that. But obviously, with the responses that you get, you're tapping into a need. Why would people respond unless you're you're fulfilling a need? You're meeting a need. And and um, how do you get that word to people who are uh, complacent, and um, or maybe just sitting in the church and waiting for them to come to the church? I mean, Christ did both. There were times that people came to him, but obviously there were times when he went to them. And we've got to have that two-way street, don't we? Absolutely. You know, if I can just interject on that, like the verse that I was like, just letting God um, minister to me this morning was the church of Laodicea. Yay. And I believe we're dealing with a lot of lukewarm mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. So God loves the lukewarm. Right. <laughs> you know, so sometimes we can, you know, focus on the hungry. Yes. Uh, but God loves the lukewarm. We got to be praying for them as well. Mm -hmm. But I was saying it earlier that um, if you don't mind me just reading Go this, ahead. it says, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I know all things you do. This is the church of Laodicea, mm -hmm. that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one mm -hmm. or the other. But since mm -hmm. you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich, I have everything I want. I think that's the issue, is that we ha they have everything they want. They have a good message, they have good coffee and donuts, you know, and all those things are beautiful. I'm not saying get rid of those things, but it's kind of like we have these, these cool messages, we have a cool worship team, does that make sense? And we can become complacent and comfortable sitting there. Um, and it says, and you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable, poor and blind and naked. Mm -hmm. So would that be the answer is to show them their nakedness? How do we do that? By the word of God. It's sure. a mirror mm -hmm. to say, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't realize how blind and wretched and naked I really was. And I believe that's hope for the lukewarm into humbling yourself to realize like, oh, there's a deeper level that God wants to take me. There's a deep le level of intimacy in Christ. Um, and I think our lives should be the, the, the example, right? Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? We go deeper with our intimacy with Jesus mm -hmm. and they see that intimacy and they desire it and mm -hmm. want that intimacy yeah. that we have with him. Because I'm sorry, when you see somebody hot on fire for the Lord, Come on. <laughs> he encourages me too. You know, when you see somebody that's so in love with Jesus, it shows and you can't help but want that. And I think that is, I, I think sometimes we forget about the lukewarm. It's like, well, they're lukewarm and God's going to spit them out, but God loves them too. And so we're not just going after the hungry in the streets, but we're going after the lukewarm to say, come alive in the name of yeah. Jesus. There is a that's deeper it. intimacy with Jesus that you can go to, sure. that you can walk with him and he desires it. He's beckoning. He's saying, come away with me, yeah. come away my beloved. I have so many things to show you. And I think it comes off with our lives that we are literally living epistles uh -huh. that they're uh -huh. reading yeah. us and they're sure, reading us. Yeah. So our secret time and our time in the closet and our time with Jesus um, in that passion will rub off on him, yeah. you know, Excellent. and um, I don't want to go all over the place, but I just said, it says, so I advise you. So this is what he advises us to the lukewarm church. Um, I advise you um, to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire, then you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me so you will not be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love. It's receiving that correction and that discipline. Yes. Even yes. now, somebody listening, maybe it's a correction yes. of saying, man, I've been lukewarm, mm -hmm. but it's never too late. Yeah. It's, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We've all been in a place of apathy. Yes. I yes. have. Yes. I've been there, but then Jesus was so quick to rescue me when I repented of that apathy mm -hmm. and said, God, I'm so mm -hmm. sorry for treating this as uh, treating your, what you did on the cross and your resurrection. So, um, common, it's not common. It's miraculous. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. And so I just believe that when we can repent of that and even somebody watching can repent of that apathy and that complacency and come back alive and return to their first love yeah, and yeah. let him be the lover of your soul. Excellent. Yeah. Well put. We got to take a break when we come back though. Let's pursue this a little further because 
I, I think you're onto something really big here because there's so much of that apathy. And then there are people who don't even know they're right. supposed to be getting out right. there right. and doing. They just believe they're supposed to come to the church. We'll deal with that and more when we return. Stay with us because these people are on fire for God. <laughs> Let you hear what they got to say. We'll be right back. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. Thank you for staying with us. We are back with our panel of laypersons. These are not pastors of churches, but they are nonetheless ministering the gospel. And we want you to hear about this because we know that it can inspire you to get out there and minister. You know, with, with uh, the pandemic and the like, I saw a statistic the other day that with the loneliness and isolation as we've had to maintain social distancing and all those kinds of things, mm -hmm. that that loneliness and isolation, not having anyone around you, uh, for some people, because they even live alone, some live alone, mm -hmm. it is the equivalent, the, the effect on the body and the effect on your mental state of that loneliness mm -hmm. is, is like smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Wow. That's the impact that it's having on people. And then folks like you come along and you draw them out and draw them together in a loving setting to worship the Lord. That's, mm -hmm. that's a powerful impact. Uh, how do we get that? to other church people without them feeling threatened mm -hmm. and becoming insecure about their situation in the church and, 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 and will want to get out there where the people are. How do, how yeah, do we do yeah, well, I, you know, I know um, that we know this, that isolation is a tool of the enemy. Yes. Uh, you know, when he tempted Jesus, he did what? He took him into the Trek desert, into, the into yeah. isolation. Mm -hmm. So yes. when he when he can get you in isolation, away from support, away from encouragement, um, that's where he begins to run things in your mind and, 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 and do things that, that you wouldn't normally do, in a sense, and think things that you wouldn't normally think. So the worst thing a believer can do is to isolate themselves. Um, and so um, I think what we're trying to do is just really say to people that you're not alone. You're, you, you're, you're not alone. You, um, no matter um, what you've been through or what condition you're in or um, you know, what you're experiencing right now, uh, there are people that care about you and that's the, that's the church. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. the Christians. That's the remnant. And we're going we're gonna to come to you and we're going we're gonna to bring hope into your situation and, and speak life into you. Um, and I think that that's, that's key, you know, that's yes. key. That's, it's bringing yes. people alive. It's bringing them out of isolation. Mm -hmm. yes. um, hope, hope brings people out of isolation. Sure. Yes. Sure. Yes. You, you want to add to that? Yeah, I do. I feel like um, th there's a song that we used to play before we would do worship in downtown, and it was called The Table. Mm -hmm. And I just see, I, I just can't express enough that whoever you are in whatever position that you're in, um, there is a place for you at the table. Um, and, and, in what we do, in, in Ross said it earlier, in, in what we do, this is not just a one man band. This is not a two man, two woman band or however you want to put it. Or the grouping, the setting of it is open for the whole body of church. Mm -hmm. We need an arm and a leg and an elbow and a nose and we need all those things to work together. Mm -hmm. That's what the body of Christ is. That's where the unity comes in because Christ wants us to be unified. And so I just can't encourage people enough um, to, to reach out or come and be a part. Some of the most amazing things that I've witnessed downtown is the people even that live in that segue or that part have come down and offered to bring food or they help set up the tent. And they just do it because they feel like they have purpose and it's just breathe life on the inside of them. They get so excited about being a part of it and they were never really ever a part of a church before or some of them are a part of a church, but they're stepping outside and even to bring a strand of lights or a table. I mean, at one point we didn't have the lights. We forgot them and a, a 
man came, a gentleman came down from his apartment and brought a lamp. Wow. And you could just see his face. I mean, it sounds so so simplistic, but he he lit up that he was able to bring a lamp and light up the inside yeah. of a tent. Yeah. And <laughs> and week after week, he still says, what can I bring? What can I do? And he gets excited about yeah. it. So that's not only for the church, but that's for outsiders as well, is yeah. come to the table. There is a place for you. Yeah. Now, the, the general audience, of course, does not know that every Thursday, yes. you do a special service outside, even whatever the weather's like, it doesn't matter. You, you do this service. <laughs> yeah. Talk a little bit about that and, and, and what's, what's going on and, and maybe invite some people to come. Every Thursday, we go downtown in the square. We set up a canvas tent. Um, and we put heaters in there so you don't completely freeze. I wouldn't <laughs> say it's probably as comfortable as your home, but um, you don't completely freeze. And we worship and we let Holy Spirit do what he does. Um, we've had other ministers come and pastors come and minister as well. And we are always open to that. Oh, if you're yes. spirit led, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we, so, so there, uh, to piggyback off even just the ones that maybe might be insecure because they're already doing ministry in the church. Maybe it's okay to step outside. There's a place for you down there as well, because we are always looking for people to minister or other worship groups to come in and worship the Lord. Yes. And so basically we're just bringing the church to the people, but it's at 7 PM every Thursday. We start set up around um, 545, 545 so. we start setting up so there's always a place for people to help us set up that tent um, the guys that do it every single week would love more help um, <laughs> and so we just do that every week and we basically what I see it as we're setting a tabernacle up <laughs> for to host the presence uh -huh, of Jesus uh -huh. and as we lift up the name of Jesus the drawing is natural yeah. it comes yeah. so what do you get out of it being personally involved as a lay person not a pastor, but you're a lay person, you're a chiropractor. What do you get out of doing this type of ministry? Mm. I think I'll get to see that someday, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Those yeah. treasures that we build up, uh, you know, yes. not here. Certainly it takes, uh, I talked to these guys about it, what, what keeps us going to spend all of our, a lot of our own personal money and time and time away from family uh, and having to fight the battle you know, spiritual and physical battles of going and setting up a tent and all, all kind of weather, you know, that kind of thing. And the, the spiritual battles that come because you're making an impact for the kingdom yes. of, you're pushing back the gates of hell, you know, and, mm -hmm. and certainly that doesn't come without its, you know, fiery darts being thrown at you. And so, uh, it, what keeps us going is literally, the, I mean, the fruit is amazing, but we yeah. don't always get to see that, right? Yeah, right. Of course, when we hear testimonies of people being healed and, and, kids being saved and being baptized right in front of us with their parents who you know, have come from a broken home for a bunch of years or, or uh, marriages. I'll never forget, one of the things that kept me going early on was uh, our neighbors, literally our neighbors, uh, we found out they were going through some tough things, thinking about divorce. And I looked at my wife one day and I said, how are we being na neighbors like the, the Bible tells us to be neighbors, right? Uh, not just saying, yeah, I'm a you know, neighbor. And um, they came to one of our worship nights, called off the divorce, yeah. got back Praise together. God. Wow. Yeah, Praise like, and, and it was like, what in the world is the Lord doing here? You know, and now, I mean, literally, there's there some of the people that I send worship videos to on a weekly basis that I just record for them and encourage them. Yeah. And they live right next door to me. Sometimes they're the hardest, right? Yes. And, uh, and so you start seeing the fruit and that keeps you going, but sometimes we don't always get to see, right? They're just seeds that are sown under the ground. We, we, someday. We'll get to see all that. But I think the thing that keeps me going is just knowing without a shadow of a doubt, every time that I spend time with the Lord, like this is what you're called. I'm at peace yeah. yes. despite, you know, despite the fact that, it, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, a lot of times it's a lot of work, man. It's, it's blood, sweat and tears. And uh, every time that I think about, oh, man, this is a lot, uh, a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of, you know, and, and this isn't going our way and this isn't going our way. And I just sit back and say, OK, Lord, is this the way you're going to do this? We just have peace. Yeah. Yeah. that surpasses yeah. human understanding, you know? Yeah. You know, I yeah. think one of the biggest problems that we're dealing with in our churches today is the assignment. Mm. People not knowing where they belong yes. in the body. Yes. You know, not knowing whether they're an arm or an elbow yes. or a leg. Mm. They just don't know. Yeah. And here you get an opportunity to show that there's an area of where you all are ministering that many people don't even consider. Yeah. Mm. Why not come and get exposed to this on Thursday nights? What time do you start with? Seven o'clock. About seven o'clock. How long does it run? 
How long does it last? However long Holy Spirit tells yeah. us. There you go. We don't there put a time go. limit there on it. Go. We've been down there as late as yeah. midnight, um, yeah. and it's only went an hour or two before. Um, yeah. We just we just let Holy Spirit do what He wants to do. I'm waiting for the day. I'll be honest with you, where we go until the sun comes up. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> true. <laughs> It'll probably happen. What What do you get out of it, Dave? Yeah, I think. Um, you know, just meeting the needs of the people. I think that's, uh, you know, we, God has given us the ability to meet those needs, you know, uh, there, there's an opportunity there. And it, it's like, the, it's like the, good, the good Samaritan, you know, the story of that, you know, the two religious people walked right by, yes. they saw the need and they did absolutely nothing about it. And I can't just walk by and continue to walk by people that are in desperate need. You see them every day, and we're, we have the ability, uh, we have the resources mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to help these people, whether it just be a Band-Aid, um, you know, to help bind up a wound, you know, that they have gotten. And we just, uh, we, we want to meet those needs and not just walk by them, so, yeah. yeah. Did, did did either, you didn't talk about what it meant to you personally, did you? I don't think I asked you that question yet. Well, you want to go to oh, it, mean, it means so much. <laughs> um, I'm emotional, but... Um, it's okay. It's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome to see the fruit, but there's joy in serving yeah, the Lord. Amen. And it's not selfish to say that. It's not selfish to say, you know, I, I have went through really um, dark times of depression even at times, and I've found that being down there and serving in that way, there isn't depression. Mm -hmm. Because you get outside of yourself, you get outside of what is not in your life, yeah. and you realize you really do realize how good you have it. Mm -hmm. And um and so there's just joy. I I think the joy in serving is 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 immeasurable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um and the lives changed of course, you know. Yeah. Jody? Oh my gosh. Um on a personal level um, I have walked into worship facing some of the darkest moments of my life and walking in there it is a battlefield and I find that I get victory as soon as I open my mouth in worship and so on a personal level it's my mom told me one time because she was a worshiper as well and she said that was an opportunity for me to get victory in whatever was happening in my life personally and I've literally walked into worship from unbelievable circumstances and I've grabbed that microphone and I've praised with everything that I have and I've worshiped with everything I have and that just breaks off of me and and so it's just been a beautiful a beautiful moment excellent it's amazing what can be done when you get the focus off of you and your problems yes. to help somebody else that's and right. then see how the Lord comes back and rewards yes. you yes, he does. amen well that's all the time we have we have another show coming up though uh, next week we're gonna have the same panel back here so we want you to be tuned in for that uh, until then we want to thank you for being with us today we'll see you next week bye bye for now You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.